Meanwhile, like gluttony stomach continued. Nice. Link's so cool when he's not collapsing and getting knocked around. Time to die! Kill me! Kill me! Help me die! Oh no. Link doesn't mess around. Ed gets sentimental. Oh no. Let's play. I'm done playing with you. I'm sorry. Hey, go. Episode 26, Reunion. <laughs> that was an intense opening. Imagine getting swallowed by two homunculi in three episodes. I'm not exactly sure what this is all about, but one thing is, this is a repeated danger for Ed and Al. Like, the more they go forward with their journey, the more tragedy they experience. And so far, they've done a great job internalizing that as motivation to keep going. But it's easy to see that there's a danger there for them. It's not hard to imagine at some point, it's just too much for them to bear. And they either give up or become some terrible version of themselves, where they're just really hateful, bitter, angry, or just paralyzed like Ed was there. Little cat? Yeah, I saw a cat. Look just like it by the factory earlier. I thought it seemed like a weird pet for a guy in a suit of armor to have. Armor? <laughs> so evil. Oh wow. Hold it. You see that fat one? I overheard them call him a homunculus. Crazy that Al and Gluttony are about to lead these two right into the base. Right into Father, maybe. There's something wrong. This place... It's strange. I could feel there was something wrong with this country since I got here. She's not wrong. What's the matter? Are you cold? It's okay. <laughs> What's with all that? Huh? Oh. The gatekeepers did all that. The gatekeepers? They won't rip you up as long as you're with me! What are they, chimeras? What is that? The Philosopher's Stone. After all my searching, it's right here, in front of me. There you go. A realization. <laughs> Yeah, they are. Nice. They make a good team. Father can make anything. He made all of us, he did. He made me and Lust, and he made Envy. <laughs> no comment from Al. The gatekeepers seem to have grown restless. There he is. Someone's come to find me. They trained us to be leaders. They kept us confined together, and they taught us at all times of the day and night. We studied political science and humanities, as well as martial arts, firearms, and of course, swordsmanship. <laughs> Don't worry. His only true purpose in life was to help you further achieve your goal. I was certain that I would be the one chosen to lead this country. I firmly believed it, and I endured any training to make it so. He actually is human. He wasn't just created as a homunculus. You are the twelfth candidate. Do you have what it takes to become my fury? My wrath? The only options I had were to die or to overcome its power. I chose the latter. It's amazing. We've made a new type of human. Congratulations. New type of human. You have been chosen to lead mankind on the path of destiny. 
Everything has been arranged to provide you with all that you will need. From now on, your name will be King Bradley. Wow. So that's an interesting twist. I don't know if they covered that before. I may have just missed it. But my assumption was that Bradley was like the rest of them, just built artificially from the beginning. But it seems like the drive to succeed, the drive to become the, the leader, it's maybe in part brainwashing, but it seems like also it's just something innate to him. Like he's the one who made it out of all the candidates, right? So it's not just the program that made him that way. It's also Bradley's dedication, Bradley's vision. And that's something in common he has with just about every character in the show where they have like one thing they're so heavily focused on that they're willing to do anything for. And in that sense, he's the same as all the other human characters too. Countless souls have battled for dominance within me, and only the most wrathful ones survived. I can't tell you if this remaining soul was one of those within the Philosopher's Stone, or if it's the one I'd carried since I was born. It might be the one he was born with. Isn't there some way you could go back to being a human? Why would I possibly want to pursue such frivolity? i become something far superior. Just as you humans take great pride in your humanity, misguided though that may be, I too am proud, because we also take pride in what we are. The woman you killed. She died with her pride intact, didn't she? Wow, he's telling Roy everything. One of the things I'm thinking about while watching this is whether or not he values being a homunculus. He is an independent thinker, and so at some point he may deviate from what Father wants him to do. And I think actually we saw that hinted at a little bit with the conversation with Pride, right? Pride pointed out that Father might not like some of the ways Bradley is talking, and she said she wouldn't tell on him. But we can see that that streak is there, which is interesting. Bradley might be his own thing at some point. It's also interesting that he's talking about it with Roy so candidly, because what's the purpose of doing that, aside from exposition, other than to try to bring Roy to his side, right? He's not ruling Roy out as someone that can be helpful or someone who can be an ally. And from Roy's perspective, I think things just got a lot more complicated because previously in his thinking and in our thinking, it's just a matter of taking down the leader, right? Like replacing the leadership. But we're finding out it's way more complex because it's not just one entity that you could take out and fix everything. It's the entire infrastructure of the country. So by stirring things up and by trying to defeat the evil they're seeing, they risk destabilizing everything. The sun represents the soul. The moon symbolizes the mind. And then there's the stone canvas of the mural. This represents the body. Slow down. Try to keep it simple, okay? <laughs> Ling speaking for all of us. Thank you, Ling. I can use this transmutation circle to deconstruct myself. Then I'll just put myself back together. That's human transmutation. And it'll open the portal. You said that gluttony is a defective portal of truth. I'll bet that if we pass through the real portal, then we'll wind up in our own reality. I'll open up the real portal. And then you two jump through it. What happens if it goes wrong? <laughs> yeah, it's really a risky. Rebound. A failed transmutation ricochets onto the one who performed it. And in this case, that would be me. All right, I think I got it. We know that when you do human transmutation, it opens the portal to the truth. He thinks if he can do that here and then get out of it, they'll end up back in the real world. One thing I hadn't considered that he talked about, I was just thinking that there was the body and then there was the soul, which included the mind. But in this mural, they make a distinction between body, mind, and soul. So that's something to keep track of. This is the first thing that caught my eye. The symbol for God is written upside down, and beneath it is the two-headed dragon, the alchemic symbol for a complete life form. Which means, this basically translates to I will strike God to Earth and become a perfect being. The Philosopher's Stone is made with living humans. Isn't that correct, Envy? Yeah, that's right. How could a nation as advanced as Xerxes fall, let alone in a single night? What happened to its citizens? These stone fragments of the mural. You put them here to hide they the evidence. It. You killed them. Yeah. You turned them into a philosopher's stone. All right, well, this gives a lot of credibility to my theory that they're trying to harness the power of the gods or become gods themselves. Also, in light of this, in, the, in light of the fact that they destroyed Xerxes to harness souls, it gives more credibility to what the doctor said, the doctor's theory that they're making the town into a giant circle and that their goal was to build a giant philosopher's stone. Envy said that that was an incomplete theory. What does seem to be true is they might actually be setting this all up. They might be using this country in order to sacrifice it to do the same thing. But I don't know what their ultimate goal is because a giant philosopher's stone doesn't seem to make sense. I feel like there's something else they're missing that they're going to. Towards. But now it does seem like they are setting up the country to be a sacrifice, just like they did with Xerxes. Who's trying to make himself powerful enough to surpass God? It was your father, wasn't it? Tell me, Envy. Whoever this guy is, he's been using you homunculi to try and recreate the destruction of Xerxes here in Amestris, hasn't he? Right. You get us out of here and I'll gladly tell you everything. 
You need to pay a toll, right? To open the portal. This is work. You're desperate to see these things as human because you want to believe that your brother still retains his humanity. <laughs> Would you hesitate to throw a bundle of logs onto a fire because you pitied the tree they came from? These souls can never go back to being human. You have to use logic if you are to determine what a human is. Don't let your emotions decide. Damn. Is that true though? Is it true there's no hope for them? Because Al is a soul without a body. Although his body still exists, right? So was Envy born out of Xerxes? Is that what they're implying? Maybe that's his Philosopher's Stone? I don't exactly know how it works. I'm not that concerned about Amestris. It's not my country. Are you serious? You've got people you love waiting for you, don't you? So just make it back alive. Yeah, he's just trying to encourage Ed. I'm sorry, but I need to use you. This is so dark. Get ready! That pose he makes when he transmutes. I knew it reminded me of something. He almost looks like he's praying. It's funny he says that because in the beginning of the series, science or alchemy and religion were posed as opposite things. But increasingly we see them as two parts of the same whole, which I think is cool because I think that's how it works in real life. Science and religion are part of the same thing, which is the search for truth. Too bad this isn't why I planned on opening you again. Lang, jump in it! <laughs> yeah, just get in. No worries. It's exactly like when gluttony swallowed us. That's a good sign. Damn. Sorry, souls of Xerxes. And thank you, yes. At least he's grateful about it. So cool. Connected to one another by the mind. A portion of my body now hurdles toward the portal of truth. So there's no point in struggling. I have to let my mind guide me. Interesting. Gotta keep that in mind. Oh, he's got the arm and leg. Did he have that before? I didn't notice. Your father's on the other side? That's right. There has to be a way to rescue brother in here. Both Ed and Al went through different doors. Were there always Mother two, two yeah. Is that his other body or something? Is that Al's body? Was crazy <sighs> damn you know i gotta say now i'm starting to understand why people love this theme this ending theme they do a really good job like connecting it to really emotional moments i think just listening to it the first time it's not as meaningful as it is for me hearing it now like as the show ends in a dramatic way and the let it all out starts flowing i get it now i get it i love this song now they did that with the winry episode right and now with this really emotional moment with Ed seeing Al's body, like being that close is crazy. It's so funny because I'm like, oh, I can't wait to go into the truth in Gluttony's stomach. I'm sure we'll get a lot of answers. And we did get a lot of new information, but it's so overwhelming. Like there's just so much to unpack in it. There's so many intricate details I feel were revealed in this in this episode that I'm gonna be thinking about for a while. Like I'm pretty sure it's all important, but it's hard to keep track of everything. For example, one thing I'm wondering about now is the connection between the mind, the body, and the soul. And also the fact that the mind connects the soul to the body. I feel like that's important, but I can't say why yet. And I'm also wondering what is the state of Al's mind? Because we know Al's soul is binded to the arm but his body is in the abyss or whatever this is and it seems like his mind is there too so what does that mean that seems like a really weird thing there's a lot of intricacy in this setup that 
I don't really understand the full implications of yet, but I have to keep them in mind. There are some things that were hinted at before that I feel like now are, are confirmed. Like part of their plan is to set up cities, create the ideal environment for destruction or for harvesting souls into philosopher's stones. They did that with Xerxes and now they're definitely setting up the same thing in Amestris. But that doesn't really answer some of the bigger questions like what are they missing? What do they need? How do the sacrifices play into it? Because we know that Ed Al, Roy are supposed to be sacrifices. Why do they need them? I feel like there's something that's missing. It's not just about accumulating a lot of philosopher stones or a large philosopher stone or whatever. There's some missing ingredient they need to connect everything. Also, even though it was short, we get a lot of great stuff on Bradley. Bradley becomes more and more interesting. I mean, he was always interesting. He was always really cool. You know, he has a hidden power. Then they explored his humanity a bit. Then they kind of yank you to the other, other side and you see his pride as a humunculus. But I think either way, one thing you can say about Bradley is that he's thinking for himself in a key way. Maybe he's the most autonomous homunculus. And that's kind of exciting because I don't know where he's going to fall. I get the sense that he's going to be on the side of Bradley, right? Like that's his side. Because of this conversation, Roy has a lot of difficult decisions to make. His team was split up last episode. Hawkeye's under close watch. But more importantly, I feel like his plan, it just doesn't make as much sense anymore. It's not about becoming the leader. The whole country is father, it seems. Or at least the important parts of the infrastructure. There are a lot of people involved in this. It's not just them operating from the shadows. They're operating out in the open. It's only like Envy and Gluttony that are operating from the shadows. Everyone else is just, it's just the country. And then to top it all off, you have that amazing ending scene with seeing Al's body to be that close, you know? And also the fact that Ed was able to overpower the forces of God or whatever to break through the portal again. It's really cool. I feel like worried about Al now more than before because it's, he's existing. It's not just like a lifeless body that's just floating in some void somewhere. He's like living. He's like living in this with a mind, it seems, and his soul is separate. That is weird. I don't know what to think about that yet. But anyway, overall, another really, really exciting episode. I kind of want to watch it again just because I feel like there was so much information there. So I might do that. But anyway, that's it for now. I'll see you guys next time for what I think is a recap episode.